Climbing's just like hitting yourself in the head with a hammer. Tyler's one of those guys doesn't believe in that scenario. I am Tyler Armstrong. I am 14 years old. And we are going to Peru to climb Mount Artisan Raju. Robert called me saying that Artisan Raju is shut down. There was an accident happened. President of the Mexican Climbing Association had a fatality. Most kids in America, they play video game. The thing that made me want to start climbing is when I was, I think, six and a half years old, I saw a nature documentary about the Great Divide, which is a trail that goes from Mexico to Canada. I was like, whoa, this looks super cool. Let's go do this. I thought he was joking. I said, well, you got to be in good shape. So I came home from work, and he's standing at the door, and he's like, let's go jogging. And then I took him out for a hike, and he just, he rocketed up the mountain. In trying to do the seven summits, we've done and completed five of the seven so far. Mount Kilimanjaro at the age of eight. At the age of nine, we did Mount Aconcagua. I'm the youngest person to ever get to the top of Mount Aconcagua. Mount Elbrus at the age of, I think, 10. Mount Denali at the age of 12. Mount Kosciuszko in Australia. I chose Mount Artisan Raju because it's the face of Paramount Pictures, that mountain logo. It's nothing I've done before. Ice climbing, you know, you're doing thousands and thousands of feet of it. Artisan Raju is a very technical mountain, so I was kind of, I reached out to them, I said, this is what Tyler like to do, is it possible? Can he do it? Does he have the skill level to, to do it? Robert and Luong are like, dude, Yes, Tyler has the ability to do it. He can do it. So, you know, let's let's plan it. On our team, you've got Tyler, myself, and then Andy, who's climbed some of the other seven summits with us. And then, you know, you have the guides, Luong and Robert. And then, oh, wow. then we have the camera guys, Neil and Trenton, come with us. Usually, we keep it really tiny. This is one of the bigger trips we've had. I was expecting when we flew into Cusco to be some small little city. This does not look like what I was like picturing. It was huge. You know, you see Machu Picchu in pictures. But like once you're there, you start thinking of all these different things and how did this actually happen.
I work this again. Mode. There's a big crevasse, Berkshine. It's like open up, so there's no way to get to the top. Nobody can summit it this season. You know, if Artisan Raj is not climbable because of the, you know, the guys died on it and it's just not climbable, then it's not climbable and we'll move on and do something different. I mean, the whole point is not to die. You know, I'm not gonna be, you know, putting freaking Tyler's life on the line to freaking do it. It's, it's it becomes pointless. So we have kind of like a, I think like a mega plan B. We talked about what mountains we wanted to, what mountains we thought about doing. As a group, we all kind of um, agreed on a mountain called Mount Tokla Raju has the same difficulties as Artisan Raju. The only thing that's different about it is it's a little bit of shorter of a climb, but it's, it's also higher. This mountain will, one, get us to a high altitude, and two, help us become better mountaineers. We're hiking the Tokelo Raju. <coughs> you can't see the mountain right now. So we're just walking. 11,000 feet, what mine says. No, we're not 11,000 feet. This one's always wrong. <laughs> I only use it for time. The pictures look crazy, but I was like, this is like, this mountain's like really crazy. have a solid concise game plan after this meeting and you know there's no changing or anything this is what we're gonna do so everybody can get their head in the game and plan for it you know mountaineering is mostly that keeping your head in the game and suffering through whatever you need to suffer through so everybody's on board with one way or the other okay it's it's like from here to high cam is about Hour and a half, max. Right, I would say double that. Yeah. The longer we stay up high, I think we're gonna have a harder time actually summoning. You know, I hate to say you start eating yourself. You know, you're cold, you're tired, you're not getting a good night's sleep. It's gonna be colder for sure. Where we are now at 16.7, yeah, it's it doesn't change that much in just another thousand with the altitude we've already gained. It's just more acclimatization at higher elevation and more rest. <clears throat> I, I think I think we'd be better off from somebody from here where it's warmer, we're sheltered. But it really depends on how everybody's holding up. I know you're hurting a little bit. I, to be honest with you, I've been having some altitude issues as well. Obviously, we've got to do what's best for the group. From high camp to the top, I feel like I would do better. And I feel like most of us would do better than starting from here, doing that long stretch, then going up. I, I would do better as a climber, um, just going straight up to the summit, than having to do this long push to the camp and then go up to the top in the same day from here to the top. Both the, you know, these scenarios have worked. Andy's um, seems more logical for better success on the mountain, in my opinion. And you know, so we end up in a bus in the middle of the night. Pretty, pretty work, but great. All you're gonna do is sit in a seat. All right, well, what do you want to do? Think about it for a little bit? I mean, I definitely, I, I, I can be. I'd like to think about it and then we can kind of reconvene.
I've been climbing for more than half my life now. Got it. But we've never done this type of ice climbing before. I do think about death in climbing. Everything's got a risk to it. Fried rice and beef. Fried rice and beef and then a cheesy potato soup. Yeah, that was great. We have so, eggs in this. It's really good. It was a good dinner.